Kelly Clark, who is a veteran loafer and works for John Mitchell Slate River Ranch. And Kelly has a few projects on the side as well, and we want to shine a bit of a light on our loafers. So, um, Kelly, tell us a little bit first how long you've been um, over here in the States loafing. Well, I've roughly been in the States for about nine years. I started off at ESMS, our vet clinic. I worked there for about a year um, and then uh, decided, you know, change things up a little bit. And I actually ran into John and he was looking for somebody and I have been there ever since. So I'm going on eight years now working for John. And um, yeah, it's been great. So that's actually a long time in the world of loping because most, the, probably the majority of young kids who get in and get out, they you know switch around. They not sure what they want to do, and they have a you know have a go at loping. Mm-hmm. Why have you been committed to this for this long? Well, I think it came with. I was a little older as well, like when I started doing it. Um, a lot of people when they get into it, they you know they're teenagers, early twenties. Um, I'm sort of one of those people that once I get something on my mind and that's what I want to do, I want to learn it that way. Um, and that's you know I was like I didn't want to switch around and you know I have a great rapport with um, with John and Slate River and and it's one of those things where it's like well I, I don't want to learn it any any other way I want to do it that way and I also um, wanted to learn more about training horses as well not just the loping side of things so I wanted to stick with the one program and and that's and I've been sort of like that my whole life it's like well I'd, I'd rather than chop and change with something stick with it you know there's going to be tough times and you've got to get through it um, but when you come out the other end it's like oh wow I learned something and you know it just makes you better so so you are gold you realize that because every single trainer and probably in non-pro and every person who really needs help would love to have somebody like you Well, yeah, and you know, even my experience that I had at the vet clinic before I actually started uh, with John at Slate River, that in itself, especially for an Australian, um, like things are pretty, um, for lack of a better term, primitive when it comes to doctoring horses and stuff at home like that. And pretty much you'd spray some purple spray on a cut and be done with it. And I was like, wrap a a leg? What what do you mean wrap a leg? I don't know what to do there. So I, I didn't have a lot of knowledge when it came to those kinds of things. So being at ESMS taught me a lot and that that information there is just gold you know just that experience um and having the knowledge of when the vet would come over and look at our horses like i'd know what was going on and and so i just have that inside knowledge of that was in itself you know pretty valuable um and then you know also learning how to work with a trainer um you learn you know what to do and what not to do and then you end up being in a position where you get new people in where you can train them as well and it's less stress on the trainer them having to do all of that you know then that sort of falls on me now and i can train people the way john wants them trained so yeah it's it's i like being in a position i like to have the responsibility um but like i said i think that sort of comes with being a little bit older as well and yeah it's not how can we convince do you think more lopers to stay in it longer and think of it as a career you know what that is tricky um i think basically like they've got to realize times are going to get tough and it's like that with any job like i was always told you know animals and kids are the hardest thing to work with um you know like it's uh, they can be unpredictable and um it's definitely definitely that way in our industry things change um the going gets tough you just got to tough through it like the only thing i that's the only advice i can give is you just got to stick with it work work through it and get through the other end and you're going to have a great um foundation um like of and and know the program and yeah it's 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 hard to convince people of that you know it's sometimes it looks like there's not a light at the end of the tunnel but there often is well and one thing i think that's obviously increase the um, challenge or the responsibility for you is that you've taken on management responsibilities as yes. well. Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. Well, um, you know, it sort of came about, I started with John at Slate River, then John decided he was going to go out and, and train out of his own place and train for the public. And that really opened up the door for me as far as opportunity. Like I um, had prior prior management skills in other jobs I've done. Like I worked for lawyers for seven years and um, I actually trained the new lawyers that came out of law school. Um, and then uh, went into shopping administ- shopping mall administration and managed the admin for that. So I had management skills. So it was something that I was like, I really, I craved, you know, having that management kind of role. And so we, when we went out to his place, it was like, well, it opened up this whole world of like, okay, well then there's, we have to build customers and we have to keep track of cow feed and we have to do all this. So it's like, I really took it on with open arms because it was something else for me to learn 
and it gave me more responsibility which you know in some cases some people don't want the responsibility but you know I took it as a, like okay this is how I make this better yes. you know what I mean and, it, and obviously pay more because I guess the one thing yes. that drives locals out of the industry is the low yes. pay yeah that's and it and maybe the long hours and all yeah, that yeah the long hours and that's what I always tell people like never sit down and work out what you get paid hourly because you'll never keep doing it <laughs> Um, and, and that was for me too, like I wanted to make a career out of it. And so I, that's, I, that's why I took it on the way I took it on. I was like, yeah, I'll do the extra work. You know, I'd be in that office at 10 o'clock at night doing the bills at the end of the month, but it was just like, you know what, it's worth it because this is, I'm going to be more valuable. And, you know, it's like, it, it opens the door for a pay, a pay rise and that kind of thing. And it just, and also for me too, I knew what was going on around the place, you know, so if, if you, you know, hear conversation, something about this or that or the cow truck and when's it going to be, I'd know when it was going to, like I could answer that question for somebody and, you know, it's, some people don't want to have that, like I said, but for me, that was what that was a driving force. It was like I want to be part of it. I want to do the best I can, and yeah, yeah I want to I want to know everything inside out. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you've obviously tackled that, and now you've got another outlet, a more mm-hmm. creative one. So yes. Tell us how this came about. Okay, so um, at first I just thought I was completely insane coming up with this idea, but I just had this this craving basically to like you know channel my creative energy somewhere and I actually it actually started out with I wanted to make uh, leather handbags and do them all by hand and my brother he actually um, he has got his own leather business back home in Australia and um, when I, I grew up rodeoing at home and I actually made all my own shirts like that I just I, I wanted I wanted my shirts to look like the the ones that were over here in America because we didn't really have a lot of that readily available to us in Australia and if you did go get them you pay a bunch of money for them so I was like, I'm going to start making my own shirts. And my mom, she was a seamstress um, and she was super creative as well. And so I got her to help me. And before I knew it, I was like designing my own shirts and making my own patterns and stuff like that. So I've always had that real creative deal going on. And I got this wild hair and I bought some leather. And well, lo and behold, I could never find the time to do it. Anyway, one week I got so mad at myself because, you know, John's wife, Hope, she knew I was going to do it. She's like, you made a bag yet? And a couple of my other friends, I'm like, no, I haven't. And it's really frustrating <laughs> me. So one week I, I got super mad at myself. I'm like, you have, to fit, you have to finish a project by the end of the week. So I had some, I had kangaroo leather. I had the kangaroo lace because I mean, that was going to be part of my bags. And I had some, I ordered some freshwater pearls as well. And I had all this stuff sitting there and I'm just like, hmm. So I started, you know, tinkering around with it. Well, the next thing I made a necklace. It was this long tassel necklace with these pearls in it. I'm like, huh, that's pretty cool. And it didn't take me very long to do. And that is honestly how this came about. I'd had my, I got my, had my logo. I had my, my, my name and everything for my business, Brumby Goods. Um, and I had all that, that was all in place, but I just, the product wasn't coming about. Well, so. it's lucky you didn't call it Brumby Handbags. Well, it was going to be called that at one stage. Yeah, it was. Um, but I just left it at, for a while, I just left it at Brumby. And then it just, I'm like, well, I want to leave it open for maybe one day. I will still get to those handbags. So, but for now, it's it's evolved into jewelry. And yeah, it's. So how long ago was that? I start, I basically launched my business in February. It's oh. been in the works for probably oh my gosh three years now like it's been something I've been thinking about and and I've been you know gathering information and like stuff to make products and but yeah February was when it all came about and that's when you launched your website no I actually just did it on social media Um, Instagram is my main platform Uh, also Facebook I really use Instagram a lot though and then as as it evolved and got bigger it's like I had so many inquiries about oh do you have a website and I was actually, I was going to go another route, um, like with Etsy, but it was a lot of work and I was like, you know what, just bite the bullet. So I, um, I got Jordan Snyder, um, she helped me uh, get my website up and going and yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been a learning curve and it, it's, yeah, it's good. And for the moment, like I've got it reeled into where I can, I can control you know, what's going on as far as you know, how much I make and all the rest of it. And, 
um, basically what I can handle for right now. But I know like if I kind of let the rain loose a little bit, it could, it definitely could get up, get quite a bit bigger. And quite a lot. Yeah, it's, it's doing really good for me though. So the website looks very professional. Um, your photography you. is very professional. Do you do that yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I've dabbled in a little bit of photography. Um, a lot of it just the horses and scenery and stuff like that. And I was like, you know what, I can do this. Product photography. Is, is quite difficult as, as yeah. I learned yeah. um, but you know I, I shadows just, and oh my and gosh auras, absolutely yeah. yeah all of that but once again I'm just like well just do a little research and see what you can find out and yeah I just I have a little deal at my house and yeah I do a lot of it just in like a little photo booth thing at home and then sometimes I'll venture outside and do some stuff out there but it's yeah so how do you get your ideas for your pieces usually when I'm loping yeah, like it's, yeah, you know, I started when I was loping around because um, every morning we usually start an hour before John does. So between saddling horses and just getting set up and stuff, and I jump on that first horse, and that was always the horse I'd have the most time on. So I started listening to um, like books on tape and stuff, like just, and they, you know, educational, motivational, all that, and um, just to, you know, get the mind right and keep learning. Um, so, like, I always, like, it's, it's a matter of you know when you're loping around utilize that time as well to I don't know whether you know sometimes I would listen to Joyce Myers um, you know just take that time instead of just you know not thinking about anything think about something so it's turned into me now I actually don't listen to my books on tape as much anymore I actually I'm constantly thinking about Brumby and what's next and you know that kind of stuff so and I stay tapped into the western world like the western industry a lot you know um, the rodeo world and especially you know the cutting world and and also my my roots from home as well like I like to try and keep that spin on it as well and so that's your style that you like yeah to yeah and I create. yeah definitely um I've sort of I've ventured into a little turquoise and things like that as well here lately because you know I did I did grow up rodeoing so I've kind of got that little that little piece in me as well and I like to you know sort of dabble in that sort of stuff as well but you know I wanted to use the the kangaroo leather not only for its durability and um yeah it's just it's just a great product but you know it's something that ties me to home as well it's kangaroo leather mm -hmm. you know and Brumby it's designs. yeah Explain Brumby. Your name for people who might so know. Brumby was just something I it just it just came up I just like I'm here in here in America I'm an Australian I really want something that that sort of ties me to home as well and but also it's some you know something that explains me a little bit as well well then I was just like well a Brumby you know it's still it's a horse um, a little wild free-spirited kind of you know that's kind of where where I went with it and um, and a lot of people know what a Brumby is from man from Snowy River some people don't but I kind of I did deal on Instagram Facebook just explaining you know what Brumby meant and um, yeah it just seemed like the right the right name and it's yeah it's pretty catchy so you work with leather you've obviously got some pearls mm -hmm. um turquoise the, turquoise metal, you, do much metal? Um, you know what i've just started um like with like uh copper wire and stuff i've just started um, playing around with that and that's kind of fun so i've got some stuff coming there that's sort of some new stuff um a lot of beaded beaded necklaces um i love working with beads they're they're really fun you know there's so many and part of the fun of it is is sourcing the product to, to yeah, use. Yeah, where, where do you find it? A lot of it actually Etsy. Um, it's a really good, but I have a, a great connection, um, the Bead Barn in Mineral Wells. Uh, she's been fantastic. It's funny, I knew um, her name's Amber and she actually worked at the dry cleaners in Mineral Wells and that's how I met her. Um, and then on Facebook, I saw that she'd open up a bead shop in Mineral Wells. And yeah, we've, we've actually had a lot of fun together. Just like I'll, you know, I'll call her and be like, hey, I'm looking for this. And she'll like, I'm on it. And she'll she's she's got the contacts to track it down for me. Okay. So now you're you're wearing um, a necklace, yes. And some earrings. That you've yes. Created. Yep. Um, there's some floating pearls. I do this with um, some silver on it as well. Um, I glue the pearls into place on on the leather so okay. they so they don't move. They say stay spaced evenly. The earrings um, super light. And a lot of this stuff I had in mind for the working girl and the girl who rides. Right. Like I've yep. kind of this was this was my original idea behind doing these it's something that was still feminine 
but it was easy to wear. Um, and same with the you're earrings. Just because you don't have to look like a loba, you can exactly. still look nice. Exactly, that's it. It's just like <laughs> I still want to look feminine. Um, and you know, some some of my some of the beaded stuff, like I, even myself, I'll just be like, oh, it's just too heavy on my neck. Yes. Whereas you know, this stuff is super easy. Um, the leather is so durable. Um, and earrings, like I would always just wear tiny, just tiny little earrings, so I can stand something big in my ears. But when I made these, like you don't even know you're wearing them, and that's what I love about them. So, yeah. so the fashionable and functional. Yes. Yeah. And then of course I ventured out into some longer stuff and stuff with pendants and tassels and stuff like that. But yeah, this stuff originally started off like with you know having a shirt in mind, wearing it with a shirt and. Yeah. It being comfortable to wear. Yeah, so yeah. You've, got a, you've got a range of things. Mm -hmm. What about other, is it mainly necklaces? Necklaces, earrings, um, I do bracelets as well, a lot of beaded bracelets. I also do the kangaroo leather and the pearl bracelets with like a snap on them. Um, all my, um, my leather, like leather chokers and stuff like that, they actually tie at the back. So you can, it's, size them. you can size them. So a lot of people like to, you know, wear them as a choker, have them a lot tighter. Other people like to wear them longer. Um, so, but they, they fit fit everybody and yeah. And how many kind of styles or designs it, do you have? A bunch, it's amazing. Like, cause even I've sort of started getting some different color pearls and things now and that's really fun. And then once you, I, I can, I'll just sit there at night time and I can, I just I'm like, oh cool, this will look great together and yeah. So who are your customers? You know what? I ship to Australia. I um, I have been shipping to Colorado, Florida, all kinds of places here lately. It's been really fun. Instagram is fantastic for that, and um, people they love how personable it is as well. You know, they can shoot me a private message and be like, "Hey, I've got this in mind." So you um, cu your custom. Make I custom something? make something. Yeah, for sure. That's really fun, actually. I enjoy doing that and working with people on that. And everyone's been great so far. They're kind of like, "This is kind of what I want," but you know, just put your sp like put your spin on it, like. Yeah, it's, it's a so lot of fun. now that you've got this creative outlet, mm -hmm. what does that do for you overall that, um, you know, in your, in your job as a loper and a manager, how, is it, how are you feeling now as opposed to 12 months ago? You know, it's just given me something for myself. Um, that's what I like about, you know, I'm, I'm accountable. I'm just, it's all me, you know, if I, if, if I haven't made a necklace that night and I wake up the next morning, it's like, oh, you should have done that. But I've got no one. Else, I've got no one to be like, Kelly, why haven't you done that? You know, it's it just gives me something to be. You know, not that like in my job, like, you know, it's very rewarding. Um, there can be times where it's not rewarding as well, and it's you know, it definitely is. You know, it's it's hard work, and you know, if something doesn't go the way it's supposed to. It's just like. You know, for me, I, I really do wear my heart on my sleeve, and if, if something doesn't go the way it's supposed to, I, it'll stick with me for a day or two. I don't let it go. It's not like, oh, well, we'll get it next time. It's like, oh, like I really, I'm quite hard on myself. Um, so it's with this, it's kind of, it's making something, it's being creative, and I love to be able to make something, look at it, and be like, you know what? I just made that. Yeah, how does it feel when you see people walking around? Oh, that comments? just, it's fantastic. You know, and I always tell people, like there's a little quote, it's something about, you know, jewelry is like like a spice, you know, it just adds to what's already there. And, you know, you, you have to, got all these beautiful people around and, you know, they wear one of my necklaces and it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it's very satisfying, yeah. It's, so would you um, offer any advice to other lopers to find an outlet, whether it be creative or whether it be just something else that they might have a passion for to help yeah, keep them in the industry? Absolutely. Like I was saying, you know, like e even, you know, listening to my Audible in the morning and stuff like that, you know, find something else to kind of kick you along and give you something to look forward to. Um, yeah, there's, there's plenty of avenues. Like you just got to, um, this industry itself, there are so many successful people and it can be so motivating to just talk to some of the people within our industry because they are smart. They're, like I said, they're successful. They're, there's so much knowledge to gain from just talking to people within our cutting horse industry. It's it's fantastic and it's, it's very inspiring. Advice, mm -hmm. yep. So what long term, what do you think your plans are with Brumby goods. You know what? I I would like to say I hope I'm famous one day. <laughs> <laughs> and I joke around about it with John. John's like, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to hire somebody to help you. Yes. <laughs> and I hope that's a problem I have one day. I really do. I hope I I would like to build it to where I do need some help. Um, and for me, you know, like having a booth maybe like somewhere like the NFR would just be the ultimate. 
you know I'm at this point like having a, a storefront isn't something I kind of I kind of want yeah, right now mm -mm. no I, I'm, I like the online store and uh, it, it works good for me right now you never know you just you never say never basically but yeah if it's to a point where it's I can you know hit some yeah, like the NFR or something like that. That would be that would be pretty rewarding. Yeah. Well, best of yeah. luck. You're a real asset to the industry. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us today. Thank you very much.